Good evening. It's Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I just wanted to welcome um, everyone to the Bible Study Conference Call for Espresso Faith. Um, we have our moderators on the line, and we have people who are listening in live. And I also wanted to just welcome those who are also listening um, via replay. We appreciate you. We love you. And we just thank God for what he's doing in each and every one of us. This is his work. And um, if you want it to be a part of uh, studying the Word of God, whether it is you're starting your own Bible study and you're not sure how to do it, you can reach out to us. Um, we can offer some support and encouragement. Our email is www, um, yeah, www.espressofaith at gmail.com, E-S-T-R-E-S-S-O-F-A-I-T-H at gmail.com. Or if you'd like to submit questions, feedback, or prayer requests, we are open to that as well. Um, we start with a pre-prayer, and there was um, someone who had a prayer request that had a sense of urgency to it. We always typically begin our Bible study with, with prayer, and I just don't ever want to um, uh, start our Bible study off with, uh, you know, out of sync, whatever it is the Holy Spirit wants to say, whatever pace he wants to set. But um, one of our moderators has been faced with um, – you know, a prayer request that we're going to cover in our opening prayer, and we just want to let her know we love you. Um, we surround our prayers and link our faith up with you. We know that the Lord has you there for a reason, Denise. And um, it, I understand that tragedy happened across the street from you, but you are well able and you're equipped to pray by the Spirit. And if there's a word that the Lord will have you say to family members, whether it's speaking peace, whatever it is, rebuking fear, you are able, and we're just we're going to continue to cover you and lift you up. So I wanted to say that, okay? Yes, Denise, are you still there? Okay. Yeah. So you are joining us tonight, and I know some people may be like, "What's going on with that?" But um, I just wanted to at least get that piece out there. Also, um, there were um, there's some of us that are traveling today as well, so I wanted to keep uh, safe travels because I think Darnisha is in Chicago today. Um, Sherry, are you traveling as well? Yep, I'm in D.C. Okay, so we're going to definitely keep travel lifted up um, as well as our, as our Bible study tonight. Um, but, again, I want to say thank you and welcome. I, I got to tell you, it has been um, an outstanding walk through the Gospels. And um, I, I just, if you want to study the Word of God, I really encourage you to go to Spreaker.com and go back to some of our past tracks, just put Espresso Faith in the field and just listen, just line upon line how we kind of dig and extract through the Word of God. And maybe there, there's going to be something that's going to spring up in your spirit or a question or something, and we encourage you to do that. But I think has been, God has been using us to break the Word of God down, and um, it, it's been mighty. So um, I'm going to just go on and just open up in prayer, and we're going to – leave off in chapter 12, start off where uh, we left off last week in chapter 12. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for your word. It is a lamp um, to our feet. It is a light on our pathway. That is what Psalms 119.105 states, and we believe it. It is a gift of life to us, Lord. I just thank you um, that we're able to speak and see atmospheres change and situations alter, Father. We surround this prayer, Father God, around this Bible study tonight, Father, that we continue to accurately divide the word of truth, that those who are listening, Father God, there's um, a hunger and a thirst for righteousness that's springing up on the inside of them, Father, that they continue to receive the engrafted word of, of truth and that they see Christ, Father, in a fresh way according to the Bible. And I just thank you that Holy Spirit continues to speak challenge, equip us as we glean from the life and the works of Jesus Christ, that our hearts are truly open. The scriptures are alive and sharp, and they are, they're there, Father God, to administer healing, to cleanse, to teach. There's restoration in the word. Um, and I just thank you for um, what's been happening in these Bible studies. It's been an impartation of the Holy Ghost. It's been revelation about the, the walk and the, and the works of Jesus. Jesus Christ, and I just thank you 
that um, we are able to uh, be a hedge, Father, around your plans and purposes in this earth and for the kingdom of God. Lord, I just take the time to lift Denise up. I thank you, Father God, that you have set her in a mist, Father God, where she's able to be a light right there on her block. Lord, I ask for peace in that family and in that situation right now, Lord. I say that it arrests confusion and foolishness, that justice prevails, Father, that this family draws near to you, that you be a warm blanket of comfort for them, Lord. And I just thank you that you have equipped Denise with the right words of encouragement, of edification, Lord, peace to be able to impart to this family, Lord. I just thank you that she moves by the Spirit of God, Lord, and I just thank you, Father, that um, your truth comes to the surface and that the devil does not have victory. Lord, I just thank you that this family sees you as a strong tower that they can run into and that there is safety for them, Lord, in the midst of all of this mess. And I just thank you, Father God, for your loving kindness. This Bible study stands with Denise as she, you know, faces that trouble um, there in her community, Lord. And so, Father God, I just thank you that tonight um, you continue to show yourself mighty to us Pull up a seat, Holy Spirit. We are yielded to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So um, let's um, look at chapter 12. So last week, uh, Regina posed a really simplistic but powerful question that just opened up the floodgates and caused a lot of discussion regarding casting out demons. And I believe we did an excellent job in standing on the fact that we have been authorized in Jesus Christ. We have we have the jurisdiction over, you know, that disarmed, defeated foe, the devil and all of his cohorts and all of the, the systematic organization of, of darkness. They must bow down to the name of Jesus. And we talked about that last week, about what that looks like when you're dealing with a person's free will, when you're dealing with, you know, um, uh, a demon or a situation where it's just the character of a person. We really covered a myriad of things last week, and I encourage anyone who is curious about what we're talking about to go back and look at, listen to the track, You've Been Authorized. It was excellent. And um, I wanted to progress in Chapter 12, and instead of um, picking up right where we left off, which was in verse, I want to say it was verse, let me see here, verse 30, the unpardonable sin, and I want us to cover that tonight. I wanted, I think a better transition is in verse 43, where it talks about when an unclean spirit has gone out of a man. It roams through dry places in search of rest, but it, doesn't, it does not find any rest. And in verse 44, then it says, this is the spirit, I'm going to return back to my house from which I came. And when that spirit or that demon arrives, it finds the place unoccupied, swept, and put in order. Then it goes and brings with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go in and make their home there. And the last condition of that man becomes worse than the first. So will it be with this, this wicked generation. So I wanted to pick up there and kind of throw that out to the Bible study. What did you glean from that piece? I thought it was a better segue for us off of last week's Bible study. Um, what did you get from that? Um, just, this is Regina. Just looking at it, um, something that stood out to me w- where it talks about the unclean spirit um, going back and, and finding a dry place, um, I think dry sort of signifies is sort of the opposite of growth. So, you know, mm-hmm. something that is growing is watered, um, is being nourished. So this is like a, somebody's spirit who has not been um, you, you basically haven't replaced, you've removed something evil, but you haven't replaced it with anything good. You haven't replaced it with anything that is alive. And so, therefore, it's open and available, you know, to the enemy when he comes back. It's like, oh, well, you haven't done anything with it, so, hey, 
we're going to take up residence. It's like, you know, a, a vacant house or mm. a, a house that, you know, used to be lived in. Somebody leaves and then, you know, you have a squatter coming and it's like, well, we, we can take ownership. You ain't doing nothing else with it. So unless a person, you know, when they are um, healed or delivered from an unclean spirit, unless they replace it with the life of God and having Jesus on the inside, they are basically susceptible to, you know, being uh, possessed again. Mm. So, yeah, that, that was one of that, the. the yeah, um, did any, was someone else what talking kind of to? Devil, what kind of devil can you cast out? Okay, wait a minute. Are you in verse forty-three? Or are you? We we, we, get, we covered that last week. What kind of devil can you cast out? Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, one. No, all of them. <laughs> the devil that you know. Is that a trick question? No, it's kind of cute though. We don't do cute. I'm sorry. Don't say that. <laughs> well, Sherry, you kind of going back to last week, but Sherry, Sherry, uh, Regina said all of them, but uh, Sherry said um, the devil that you know. No, the devil that knows you. That knows you. All I son. know, Jesus I know. Mm-hmm. We know you, Jesus. We know you, Jesus. The one who recognizes your authority. That's why you can get Right. It. Right. No, you're yeah. right. That is that is correct. I think we actually said that last week, too. Like you had reversed it in, in the way that you stated it, Sherry. Yeah, but I had it right. The one that knows you. Hmm? Last week, I'm pretty sure I said it the right way. <laughs> you did. You did. So, so what comment did you have to make about what we just talked about? Hmm? If you don't mind, can you repeat your question? I just want to make sure I have your question in my brain quick. So, well, wait a minute. It's not a question. It's what did... You said what did we think about, us. and you had said some stuff. And so I want to just make sure I have an understanding of what, you're, what you threw out there. Well, I'm just talking about verse 43 through verse 45. Um I thought that was a better segue coming off of last week instead of going back into the unpardonable sin, which we're still going to cover tonight. But I'm looking at the fact that it, the problem when the when – a, so we, we talked about casting out demons, but the reality is that demon will walk around in dry places and say, hey, you know what, it, seek in search of rest and, and, and doesn't find it and say, look, I'm just going to head back home, back to the house I know back to that person and yes. see if I can knock on the door and see if I can get back in. And the reality is no. it says that when that spirit arrives, it finds the place empty or unoccupied, swept, and put in order. But the issue is not that the house was put in order or that it was swept or clean. It was that it was empty. It was unoccupied. You know, and else he, can come, back, he can come into a house, and I, think, and I wrote in my margin what Regina said, squatters. We know we got that problem in Detroit. You go on vacation, somebody goes, oh, cool, they're gone, and they just run up in your house like roaches and take over and got the nerve to assume right in your house. This is something yeah. that I like about this scripture because it says that it was swept clean. So mm-hmm. it's like when you get when somebody gets delivered from a demon or something, God don't just deal with he's he, he totally removes everything. It's not like, oh, I'm just going to take care of the demon, but I'm going to leave all these other issues. It's mm-hmm. what's clean. You are like clean slate, fresh start. Mm-hmm. You have an opportunity to do something good. Another thing is just because you get delivered from something, you know, from an evil spirit or something like that doesn't mean that you're born again. You know, God right. can deliver people who are not saved, and, it, and this is a clear example. You, you got a demon, you get delivered, everything's wiped away, fresh start, and therefore, because all the other stuff is on there, plenty of room for whatever, including mm-hmm. seven other demons that he brought back with him. You know, so that was just no, what that just jumped out, you know. No, what you're saying, and I don't know if Sherry has something, but what you're saying is very key because people don't believe they still have a role in keeping their house occupied, meaning their life sealed. And we know that a house that is filled by the spirit or filled with the words of Christ, the word of God, is a house that a spirit can't re-enter into. 
You're not going to be able to come into a house and enter in with your homies, seven other demons, more wicked, when I am filled with the spirit of God. That's why it's so important when there is a purification or there's a cleansing and it's like, boom, we have driven out what held you bound. You have a responsibility to be filled. You have a responsibility to maintain, you know what I mean, that purification, that filling. And there's a, you know, what is it, Ephesians 5.18, continuously be filled. It's not just this one refreshing. I think, you know, you can use the same scripture with how people feel when they go to conferences or revivals. Like you get pumped up, pumped up, like it's a rock concert. And then you get in the parking lot and you're ready to fight. Or you get, in, you get home and you're exhausted or that weekend. It's like you're, you don't even remember what it was that you just went to or the experience you just had because you're not doing anything to maintain that infilling. Can I say it that way? So yeah, that's let, me, good. let me say it this way. I, I agree with what you're saying, but let me throw a different perspective in there. Okay. Um, so let's use us as like a vessel. And this vessel in 43 just got delivered. This unclean spirit that was in him was driven out, is gone out of the man. Now that spirit mm-hmm. is roaming, in, roaming around. It's roaming in dry places because water places, water is harder to move and get through. So it's moving around in dry places because dry places you can move better. And it's not finding a place. Now, the vessel that we are, we've gotten the spirit, the wrong spirit out. But if we don't start filling our vessel with word of God, with Holy Spirit, with prayer and the things that it takes, and not just just filling it, we have to fill it just like at that concert we get filled up, we get hyped. And then we have to release it and then go back and fill it up again. And so mm-hmm. we are to be more like sponges. Sponges absorb, and then you're supposed to squeeze out so that others can get delivered, others can get set free. And then, again, repeat, fill up, stay moist. Sponges stay moist when you keep them around water. They hold, they retain, they stay that moisture. And that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to stay that moisture. Fill up but be able to squeeze out so we can share and pour out that anointing. That's our purpose, to go out and take what we filled up on and squeeze it out on somebody else so somebody else can get filled, deliver, spirit filled, get saved. That's kind of how I look at us as a vessel. And when this scripture in 44 says it comes, the spirit comes back to that house, to that vessel, and it finds that it's just empty, and it's swept clear, but nobody's taking time to start refilling, pouring in and pouring out and pouring in and pouring out so that this, this action repeats. That unclean spirit has an opportunity, a door, to come back in because now your sponge is all dried up in the corner and you ain't been doing what you're supposed to do to keep it moist. And so it's bringing other brothers and sisters spirits of evil with it because you ain't been doing anything with your vessel. You know what? There's something, something else comes to mind, too. That's good. And I don't have it all together, but pastor said something one time I thought was good. He says, authority you won't use, the devil will, 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 will operate in it, or he will, hmm. yeah, something like that. So, you know, and again, I don't have it quite, quite formed, but Jesus said this. He says, when I come, when I find faith, and then I'm thinking about, you know, faith comes from the inside. It comes from, you know, it comes out of the spirit man. We build up our most holy faith, you know. And we build up our spirit man. We build up our most holy faith by doing spiritual things, whether it's speaking in the Holy Ghost, whether it's praying, whether it's psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, you know. And um, so what I'm thinking is that, you know, if you don't have, and, and faith kind of comes along with a authority, you know. If, if you're operating in the faith of the Son of God, Okay, you know, I'm thinking about the scriptures of we crucify for Christ. Nevertheless, we live, and yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And in the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. I live by the, I think I can say, authority. If you don't have an authorized, uh, I don't know how I want to say it, porter at the door where the enemy wants to enter in or however he, 
you know, previously been associated with you, if you don't have a, a, a new authority, okay, or, or I should say an authority that has authority, you know, authority over the enemy, at the door and he comes and you don't have a, a, an authorized, uh, you're not an authorized dealer, you don't have authority, he's going to come right back in and do his thing because there's no authority to keep him out. Yeah, it's kind of like changing the password on your um, email account or changing the passcode on your alarm. The enemy might have had it at one point, but when you got, you know, saved and delivered and spirit-filled, you, that passcode is supposed to change. But if you aren't operating in your authority, he still has that passcode. And so he can just push the buttons and come right on back in. He can wow. push you out and you lose your mind and start cussing people out. <laughs> that sister that blew by you no, no. you off and you start giving her authority over to you by, by giving her the finger blowing by. You, you know, now watch this. Now watch this. The passcode right. has to do with you not being transformed. You know, we got to be transformed oh. by renewing our minds. There has to be some work done so that you're no longer the same person, that you no longer respond uh, to the same kind of stimuli, you know? The enemy, the enemy right. you know, that, 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 knows your code. And if you don't transform and something else, I mean, you know, I'm just working on this with y'all. I'm just working with No, I, I agree. I, I think that that's how come people get into these cycles where they they go from Sunday to Sunday or they go from conference to conference and they're, they remain the same or even worse than before. And there's this, this dissatisfaction because there isn't a real change that's happening. There isn't a real infilling that's happening. It's just sometimes people just going through the motions or the hype or they're getting caught up in what's happening, but it's, they don't, there's a lack of understanding or I don't know. I just, when I looked at this, kind of going back to what you said about the whole um, like the keypad, and, and, and I challenged that piece around walking in the dry places, Sherry. You said it's easier to walk in dry places yeah, than it is in. You, your feet don't get good gripping in water. It's okay, I got you. Marsh, your feet get better gripping on dry land. I understand. No, with that, with that clarity, I do understand what you mean now. Because I was thinking of like real thirsty brothers, You know, it's just like they looking around and when you don't have, when you're not filled with the words of Christ or filled with the spirit, you will keep allowing that bad person to keep coming back and knocking on your door. It'll be worse than before. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like if you keep allowing that to keep coming in and coming in and you see, and I'm using this, I used, I said thirsty brothers because I know a lot of women um, allow, they're more susceptible to this, they allow that, that cycle, that vicious cycle to keep happening in their lives where they keep inviting that spirit back in, like they can't detach from it, and it becomes even worse than it was the first time when they felt like, I can kick this person out, I'm strong. But if you are not filled with the Holy Ghost and continuously being filled, and, and this also tells me that that infilling of the spirit is a shield, it, it protect, it's a protector. Hey, let me say It's a protector. Real quick. Let me say mm-hmm. something real quick. So we have this thing in our business that if nothing changes, nothing changes. And so I think a lot of people, they get, you know, instantly delivered from their whatever's keeping them in bondage or whatever, think that, oh, I'm done. No, you're not done. You have to do the work to continue the, to be on the path. To stay on the path. And the work is, you know, praying, fasting, studying the word, renewing your mind, speaking in tongues. And, like, when you don't do the work, you don't change. And that change is what you need to keep that unclean spirit from coming back and bringing most fears and knocking you back seven steps back. So, yeah. They don't do the work. I want to add a. They think, oh, I'm changed, and they don't do the work. <laughs> Go ahead. I want, to, I want to add a perspective about the whole dry versus wet thing. Okay, so obviously it's talking about spiritually dry places. And, I mean, the only thing that's going to keep a demon from going somewhere is the spirit of God. And the word talks about, you know, Jesus being the living water. So mm-hmm. I think that if he is going and trying to avoid water, he's, a try, he's trying to avoid the living water. That's the only thing that's going to keep a demon away. 
the spirit of God. And then also we have to think about, like, what type of person gets delivered? I mean, you got the anointing of God come over you and, and destroy a serious show, remove um, demons from your life, and then you not turn to God. Are you not thankful? Like, what type of hard-hearted, just ungrateful individual does that? You know so, what? I think, you know, I think, if, if that's where you are, God delivers you, and then you don't turn to him, that says something about your heart. And so, therefore, you are susceptible to to receive more demons. You, you obviously did mm. not accept Christ after being delivered. Well, mm. so, I'd, say, I'd say this. I'd say, what about alcoholics? I think I've never been to Alcoholics Anonymous, but I've got a few in my car, and we had some conversations. And I think about it is they say something like this. I always got to keep this, they don't say keep my flesh under, but as long as the body or the flesh knows the taste, has the appetite, maybe the network has been developed in the mind, whether it's alcoholism, whether it's being a homonger, you know, there are these, these networks of experiences that, that you have to continue, I guess like you said, you know, somebody said, continue to be, you know, continue to be in the spirit. Continue to be in the spirit so you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh because these networks have become strongholds. And, um, and uh, I, don't, I don't know that you tear them. I mean, you can, and I, and I don't, I don't you know, maybe there's a discussion to have about strongholds relative to, to being possessed or devils being cast out. I would say devils take access to, to networks of, of filthiness in the flesh, of filthiness in the mind, of filthiness in the spirit. You know, I've heard all those terms used. And I think they're in Bible, they're, for the most part, they're biblical, filthiness of the flesh, of the mind, of the spirit. And the enemy takes, takes advantage. He takes an opportunity. If you've got these things and these appetites set up, I'm, I'm thinking of a brain, a brain of experiences, a brain of knowledge, you know, uh, who has, what the Bible says, it has the, the whims and the appetites, the motions of sin. And so even though you have the Holy Spirit, you get saved, uh, you got to practice the presence of God, you know. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you've already said it all, but I don't think it's completely yeah. a matter of having a bad heart. It's a matter of you got to do that work, like Sherry said. Or you can lose it. If you, don't, if you don't use it, you can lose it, you know. Like I took four years of French, and I can have a conversation with a three-year-old, okay. If you, if, you don't, if you don't keep work that muscle, same thing we talked about faith, building that muscle or when it, comes time for you to be able to stand in something. I know Denise is in a situation right now. Here's an opportunity for her to exercise her faith, the things that the Lord has been equipping her. She's able to stand. And we are surrounding her in prayer in this situation. But this, she's faced with it because she's able. She's been equipped. The Lord is with you. Same thing. We, we have... Um, we have a responsibility to cultivate. In Colossians 3.16, it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. And it goes on to talk about teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. But the, but the word says it needs to dwell. That, that dwell goes back to that, that habitation or that house piece, that filling. It needs to be dwelling on the inside of you richly. How does something dwell in you richly? You got to, you got to feast on it. You got to feed, you got to meditate. It has to be a priority to you. Hey, and you he just saw it to the spirit of the spirit be life. He just saw it to the flesh of the flesh be corruption. So this is a all That's right. maintenance program. Right. It is. That's right. Sherry, go ahead. Says, the word of God says two things. You got to die daily. Your flesh oh. has to die daily meaning it's going to rise up daily. So this is a continuous thing, and the scripture also talks about renewing your mind. I-N-G is continually, meaning the same mess that you just overcome has memory muscle in your flesh, and it has the ability yes. to come back. If yes, yes, you amen. do not renew your mind, if you do not die daily, if you don't put your flesh under subjection daily. And so it's a, it could be a combination of, Hey, there are some people who just have hardened hearts and they need to be given over to reprobate mind. But then there's those folks, you ain't doing the work. You ain't renewing your mind. You ain't dying daily. That's why you're still struggling with the mess that you got delivered from. Amen. I was going to say, this is Denise. I was going to say this whole situation that happened to me. I was doing something that I've never done before, being outside at night with a bonfire in my backyard. 
and I know that it was it was God's decision or his my unctioning or whatever for me to be there because had I not been there at the time this whole crime thing scene happened, who knows what would have happened. And I ended up um, hosting the whole entire crime scene in my house for in and out of the bathrooms and coffees, and this went on from midnight to 6.30 in the morning. And I just know that God put me in that place. And, yes, I want to be angry. I want to be mad. I'm furious. I, I feel like <clears throat> the Satan just came in and tried to steal and destroy this whole entire street, this neighborhood. And um, if we allow it, we're going to let it happen. And huh. that's why I came on the Bible study tonight is because I know I need you, and I know I need him, and Hallelujah. I need his word. And I'm – I'm hurting, and I'm trying to make peace with this, and I'm trying to find out what, why this happened, and there is no way to find out why this happened. All I know is it happened. We have to forgive the person that did it, and we have to love the families that are involved because they're hurting more than I can possibly ever hurt. But I know that the Lord put me here. He put me here yes. to be the light yes. in this dark street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Denise, I'm going to say this to you. And this is just my take on it. You can be angry and not sin. You know, we don't have to be at peace with it. We can just say, you know what? I need to make. I need to pray change into this. I need to do things in the spirit realm to cause change. Sometimes your anger can be a catalyst to make moves and things happen in the spirit realm to cause change. You know. Sometimes I say, you know, I get things done because I, I, I'm frustrated with the current situation, so I, I get. You know, it puts me to action. It spurs me to a, a higher elevation in praying more or doing more study in the Word of God or, try, you know, it spurs me to an action situation because I'm not happy with it. I'm not at peace with what happened. Does that make sense? It just it, yeah. it can be fuel for bringing a catalyst of change. And you may not be able to physically do anything, but your prayers avail much. Your prayers can shift and move, and your faith, that's what moves God. And he hears you, he knows it, he knows what you're standing on. And sometimes that, out of frustration, that's got to move you to a different perspective. I, I don't know, that's just... That's just I, I'm, in, I'm, I'm going to Bible school right now, and Wednesday I have a paper that's due that I've been procrastinating, getting done at six page, and guess what the topic of the paper is? Is principles of prayer. And so today I've been forced to sit down and write this paper when I don't feel like it. I just That's the last thing I want to do is sit here and write a paper because I can't think of it. I just keep seeing all the horrific scenes that I saw in my mind that no person should ever, ever have to see, and that's all I think about, and that's all I want my to mind. think about at this point. And, but I'm having to sit down and write this prayer, and it's making me dive into, you know, Strong's Concordance. It's making me read, you know, the New Testament. It's making me look at different parts of the Bible for different things. And what it's yes. doing, it's, it's healing me. It, it's now this prayer, this paper that I was putting off and procrastinating now is what I desire most to finish because I my know mom. I have to. And I know it's Good. a must. And I when I know. You know, here's the other piece. I know Sherry has something that she wanted to add to, Denise. We, sometimes instead of just feeling like I got I to gotta produce something, I got to produce something for a class, and you, you went through something very traumatic, just take a moment to sit down, get quiet, and just pray by the Spirit and allow Holy Ghost to give you another image. It goes back to when we were talking about that cleansing and that purif the purification, there is a cleansing out as he fills you up. Can I say it that way? The Lord yeah. is driving those images out. They have to bow down to the name of Jesus. They cannot be louder than the voice of Holy Ghost. That Amen. fear, all of that stuff gets arrested in his presence. And so yeah. you have to stay entered in until that is washed over you, and he just comes in, and I, and I can't explain it other than it is the supernatural presence of God, power of God, just comes in and just lifts you, and it gives you a whole other perspective, not just even of the situation that happened across the street from you, but God will use that to minister to you, Denise, on prayer, and give you another perspective about prayer. 
that yeah. you wouldn't have gotten by just, I'm going to go do the Strong's Concordance. And I'm not trying to hate on that. I love Strong's. But yeah. Yeah. how about you get something in your inner man that's fresh, that's out of a well, that's, that's something that he downloaded fresh from heaven for you. Yeah, let Specific me throw this to in what there. happened, it, it, you know, just recently. Go ahead, Sherry. Yeah, let me throw this in there. So speaking in tongues is for building you up. It is for edifying mm-hmm. you. So when you got situations where you're feeling down, that's what it's for. Build you up. Find out who you are, specifically who God says you are according to his plan from the foundations of the earth. And when you start to tap into that, that's a whole different layer of prayer that starts to relate to finding your purpose in this whole scheme of things and walking this journey called life. And what it does is it replaces your fear. It replaces those terrifying things. It replaces those images in your mind of what you see floating on the news, floating in your neighborhood, floating in your, your current reality, and it shifts it to the perspective and the mindset of what God says you are, who you are, and what you have. That's what it does. It's I, I, I like your brain. It. Amen. Amen. Would you say, Dad? I'm going to let you speak and then I'll go. And that doesn't need a mechanical explanation. It just mm-hmm. works. When you're praying right. in the Holy Ghost, you get revelation knowledge more so about who you are in Christ, who Christ is in you, what you have access to. You get more of an awareness of what your authority is. And even though this event has happened, this occurrence, this situation has happened, you're going to become more aware of what your authority is for the future and maybe even what your authority is even now relative to continuing to minister to people in the neighborhood and the community. Um, the other thing is, like Sherry said, very specifically, when there's issues of worry and anxiety praying in the Holy Ghost, again, I don't have the a mechanical explanation. It works. It will ease those anxieties. You'll find peace will just drop on you at a certain point. Okay? And, the, and then the last thing that, that it helps us do, well, I shouldn't say the last thing, but another thing it helps us do, it actually helps us get rid of character flaws. When you mm-hmm. pray in the Holy Ghost. Yep. Hey, let me say something yep. else. And I'm going to mm-hmm. – did we lose Dad? I, don't I think we lost Dad. Yep. Go ahead, Sherry, and then I'll, I'll um, connect. Oh, you didn't lose me. I'm done. Oh, okay. oh. Done. So, oh. you just stopped talking. Okay. Yep. <laughs> let me make this comment to you, Denise, from a perspective of student mindset. Because I've had to do some, some serious writings and – papers over my, my time, and I know where you're at where you didn't procrastinate. And sometimes you aren't motivated, and it's not there. And I remember through my undergraduate, through my master's, through my doctorate, I had to go to sleep to get the revelation of what to put on the paper. I had to find a prayer and a rest. And I, I'm not kidding you, the Holy Spirit would download 20, 30-page papers to my spirit, and I would wake up out of my sleep and write it like nothing, mm-hmm. like nothing. And so sometimes there is a rest that you have to get, and, and it comes Hallelujah. to your spirit man. You have to find that rest place for it to come to your spirit man. You sitting there toiling over it. It's sitting there. I know I've, I've done this five years on a doctorate, two, three years on a master's four or five years on an undergrad, I remember vividly going to sleep, and I, I might have read one thing on the paper, maybe the topic, and I would say, Lord, give this to my spirit. I am not feeling motivated. I don't know what to put on this paper, and I would go lay down. And I promise you within not even two hours, I would wake up and I would have a whole 20, 30-page paper ready to roll. And sometimes you just got to find that, that rest for it to come mm-hmm. to your spirit man. And I'm, I'm telling you, sometimes you, you hear more clearly in your sleep because God speaks to us quietly, and it come, right. it'll come. Yeah, um, I'm going to say this, too. Oh, I'm sorry, was someone else speaking? You know, when um, Sherry mentioned, um, and she may not have said these exact words, but like a righteous indignation towards, something, you know, it's, there, there's an anger, like a good anger, like you angry and you sin not. And I remember something you said, Denise, in the beginning, you said, I'm, we may never know why this happened across the street from you. But I, I want to challenge even that piece, because what we've been reading here in verse 43 
through 45, that spirit, it says, you know, it was walking through dry places, looking around. And then it said, I'm going to return back to my house from which I came. And then it says, and when it arrived, and it was taken, it was observing about what was going on, and then began to take action. It said, then it went and decided to bring seven other spirits more wicked than itself. I'm, I'm bringing, I'm breaking down each one of these pieces because there's, there's this, the Lord will give you the root behind something too. He'll show you in prayer what's been in operation in your territory. You are the believer on your block. You have jurisdiction, and you can tell the devil the jig is up and let him know, I am a believer who knows my authority, and I am going to pray. You have to move out of here. And the Lord will begin to show you, obviously, there's a murderous spirit, but there's something else going on. And he'll begin to show you the roots and the layers. And you don't know if it's just dealing with this young man. It could be something dealing with the parents. It could be something else that's going on that hasn't been yet unseated in your neighborhood. I remember when I dealt with um, the spirit of suicide in San Francisco, there was demonic spirits who had um, taken over uh, one of, you know, my workplace, it was crazy. And a man climbed up on the roof, split, slit his wrist, and eventually jumped off, but I saw it in a dream the night before. And that spirit literally tried to plague me. I mean, it bothered me to see that man. I mean, you said you saw a horrific crime scene. I saw a crime scene, too. I saw a scene that was just as bad. Someone's brains on the sidewalk. It was disgusting, and the images taunted me, and it terrorized my staff at the time, too. But I had to get my grip and go, wait a second, and shake myself and, and get back on post and say, devil, you've got to go. You cannot be here. And that's what I'm saying. You have to stand on the word of Christ. You have to stand in your authority, and you have to tell the devil, remind him, you are a lawless, di disarmed, defeated foe, and you got to go back in them bushes. You got to get beneath my feet and get off my neighborhood, get out of my family, get out of my friend's house. You have to speak that thing. And it kind of goes, I, I encourage you to go back to the message from last week about you've been authorized. It, you have, and it sounds like this family has found refuge in your home, that you have an access to them to minister and to pray, and the Lord will give you the words. Um, but I just kind of wanted to put that piece out there. Did anyone have anything to yeah. kind of seal it? I do. Let me throw this out. Mm -hmm. um, I was listening to a minister. He called, he's called, his, his name is Joe McGree, McGee. He speaks specifically on family. He's an awesome man. He did a teaching called 24 Characteristics of Greatness from the example of child being a childlike, childlike characteristics, characteristics of greatness. And in this, he talks about a situation of um, getting you off focus and distractions. And you got to see this in, from a 10,000-foot perspective, too, in that some things come to distract you when you're focused and you're trying to serve God. And I'm going to give examples. When Peter stepped out the boat and started walking on the water, as long as he was focused on God, he was good. But when he took his eyes off of God and looked at what was around him, looked at who was still in the boat, looked at the, you know, the wind being bolsterous, he started to sink. And so this is a distraction, too. You, you can look at it as a distraction. I'll give another example. How can a lion tamer get into a cage with a little tiny whip and a little four four leg stool and not get ate up by that lion because that lion's vision isn't focused and so when he puts that four legs chair up there he confuses the lion to the point where the lion can't focus on one peg to attack so he can control him because he controls his focus and you have to see this for what it is it is a distraction to get you off your game from your studying that you've been doing in Bible school, from your praying, from your getting edified and coming to your studies on Monday. 
it can be a distraction. You said it's a horrific thing. It keeps bringing images in your mind that making you mm-hmm. lose focus. Your focus needs to be shifted back to what you were doing before. Get your eyes back on God. He will clear mm-hmm. this up for you, clear as day. And so, that's, all that's excellent. That's excellent. There's, there's, there's one more thing. There's one other thing I think about. If you, yep, and this will be the final point. If you personally are detached enough from this situation where you can, I want to say, almost be an observer, then the great responsibility you have is not to be drafted into it emotionally because somebody got to have a cool mind. Somebody got to have a yes. mind. Somebody got to have a mind of Christ. So if, if, if it hasn't come directly to you where you've been hitting the flesh with it, where you can get back and still pray, that's what you need to be doing. Rather than seeking to be more emotional, you need to be the one that operates in the wisdom of God. Yes. You can do it. That's excellent. Um, During the situation, I was very calm, cool, and collected. And even up until the next day yesterday, up until later in the evening, then the reality of all of it started setting in. And then I just, you know, felt kind of fell apart. It just, and then to be at home and to remember everybody coming in and out during the midnight hours and all during the night and, you know, and I'm sitting at home seeing all this and reminiscing about it all, and it just, it just tears somebody apart. And, mm-hmm. But that's why I knew how important today was to come to this Bible study because I myself couldn't get there. But now I can through your strength Amen. and through your words and through your advice. I can get back there. But at this, at, up until this point, I couldn't. Amen. Denise, um, you are not alone. You have people here who are connected uh, by faith and in prayer. There is no distance in the spirit realm. Our prayers are just as effective here in, you know, Metro Detroit and Bermuda, wherever we're located around the country. Um, we, we're praying for you, and we believe God is going to use you mightily in this situation. And um, I, I just don't want to add anything extra than what we've um, put out there for tonight because it's a lot. I encourage you to listen to the replay or just, like we said previously, just get, get off this call and go right into prayer. Um, I want to bring the Bible study to a close, and I know Regina's closing out. I'm just going to let you, Regina, just kind of flow. We didn't have any other um, – prayer request, but by the Spirit, I believe you know what direction to flow in. All right. Hello, let's pray. Dear Father God, we just thank you so much for this Bible study, Father God. We thank you for um, what has been shared, what has been downloaded into our spirits, Father God. We thank you that um, you will continue to speak to us throughout the week, continue to um, enlighten us and let your word continue to unfold, Father God, as we learn and continue to study your word. Father God, we just pray right now for Denise, Lord God, in this situation that um, she and her community um, has experienced. Father God, we know that there is um, a purpose, maybe not a purpose for the person's death, but we know that in light of everything that has happened, Father God, that there is a greater purpose for this community. And, Father God, we just pray that you will give Denise the strength, that you will give her wisdom, that you will give her knowledge and understanding on how to um, maneuver throughout this time, Father God. Show her what her purpose is in the midst of this, Father God. Father God, we just pray that um, she will be that beacon of light, that she will uh, cause people to be drawn to you through the light that is on the inside of her. Father God, we pray that you will use her to draw the community together, Father God, that they will come to her, Father God, and and because they've noticed that there's, that there's something different about her. Father God, we pray that they will be drawn to her and that they will seek her out, Father God, and say, what must I do to be saved? They will seek her out and say, pray for me. And, Father God, we pray that as they come, Father God, that you, we know that you've already equipped her, but, Father God, we pray that you give her boldness, Father God, to be able to witness to be able to share her testimony, to be able to share the gospel, Father God, to be able to pray for people and to be able to, um, if, it, if it be the case, even boldness to cast out demons, but to take authority, Father God, over the demonic spirits that are 
trying to uh, take charge. Father God, you, you said that it's our job to take authority, so we must do it. Father God, we, we don't sit back and just wait for somebody else to do something because we know that if we do nothing, that the enemy will. The enemy will take charge. So we speak um, peace over the situation. We um, declare that we have authority in the name of Jesus. We join our faith together with Denise, and we declare that this will be a street for the Lord. This will be a street. Father God, we claim this street for you. We speak over every household, Father God, that was represented, every household represented that came into her house, Father God. We just pray that there is an open door, an opportunity for witnessing, an an opportunity for salvation to be shared, an opportunity, Lord God, for you to um, affect and change each and every individual's uh, life and situation, Father God. We pray for the family members that were involved and and uh, uh, that lost a family member. We also pray for those who witnessed the situation, Father God, that you will, Father God, that you will bring peace a peace that passes all understanding, Father God, that you will, um, Lord God, just help them to be able to sleep at night. Father God, if there are any children involved, we pray that you will, that their innocence will not have been taken, Father God. We pray that you will restore their innocence, that you will restore them supernaturally and spiritually, Father God, so that they will not, um, so that this will not be something that will, um, keep them from being able to function, that it will not be a, a source of anxiety, or a source of fear, Father God. We curse fear right now in the name of Jesus, and we we seek that peace that passes all understanding right now. We send it forth right now in the name of Jesus, and we declare, Father God, that there will be peace on the streets. Father God, we just pray that those that were involved in this situation, that whether um, those that may be guilty of the crime, Father God, we just pray that you will bring um, a swift... Um, closing to it, Father God, that um, that all the evidence will be there and that, you know, like you said, you reap what you sow, Father God. We, we pray that um, there will be justice in the name of Jesus. Father God, we also pray that in the midst of the just, justice, Father God, that you are the great judge and that you will still, uh, that your mercy will still be present, Father God, and that the individuals who are responsible, Father God, will have an opportunity to repent and to um, seek you and find you, Father God, that they'll find that grace, Lord God, to endure whatever it is um, that come as a consequence of what they have done. Father God, we pray that um, the family members and even those that witness, Father God, will be able to forgive, Father God. We pray that there will be no, um, that the enemy will not be able to harden their hearts as a result of this, Father God. We just pray that your love will be present and will be uh, felt, Father God, even as they continue to visit Denise throughout the week and throughout the month and the coming times, Father God, we just pray that the love will break up the follow of their heart where they may want to be um, hard-hearted or unforgiving about the situation, Father God. We just uh, pray for intervention, Father God, so that will not happen and so that they will be open and receptive to be able to receive um, you, Lord Jesus. Father God, we just pray for those that um, are present on this call, Father God, that are experiencing symptoms of sickness and disease and and discomfort, Father God. We just pray that your spirit will touch them right now in in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that by the anointing that the power of God will just be all over them from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, breaking and and rebuke rebuking, rebuking every form of sickness and disease and any form of unclean foul, unclean spirit that will try to entice them or try to attach itself or to torment or to nag, Father God, we just curse it right now in the name of Jesus, and we command every fallen unclean spirit to flee in the name of Jesus. We command every fallen unclean spirit to take their hands off of those right now that are experiencing these symptoms, Father God, and we send your word. You said you sent your word and you healed them. So, Father God, we speak your word and we speak healing. We speak wholeness. We speak peace, Father God, complete and total peace, nothing missing and nothing broken, Father God. Lord God, we just... Um, Pray for um, renewed strength, Father God. Sometimes we may not necessarily be sick, but sometimes we just need strength. Sometimes we just need to be renewed. Sometimes we just need to be encouraged. And, Father God, we speak encouragement and peace over everyone that's present on this call, Father God. Lord God, we just thank you that you will continue to uh, renew our minds, 
You'll continue to uh, lead and guide us and direct us, Father God, throughout the days, throughout the weeks, Father God. You'll continue to use us as vessels in our workplace. You'll continue to use us as beacons of light where people will be drawn to you, Father God. We give you praise and honor for everything that you have done for using us, Father God. We thank you that we are vessels to be used for your honor. Father God, we yield ourselves to you. Um, and we say, Lord God, that you are the potter and we are the clay and you are continuing to make us into your perfect will. And we thank you and we yield ourselves and make ourselves available to you. Father God, we are your mouthpiece that you can speak through us um, to those around us, Father God. We uh, make a point to get sensitive before you. And as we were speaking earlier about um, speaking in the Holy, praying in the Holy Spirit, Father God, we just pray that as we continue to pray in the Holy Spirit that you will make our spirit sensitive, Father God. And even as we um, yield to the Holy Spirit, that he'll be able to pray out his perfect will and plan, that we'll be the mouthpiece in that way as well, Father God, to pray out your perfect will and plan on our jobs, in our community, in our homes, wherever the case may be. Father God, we just thank you uh, for everything that you've done tonight on this call. We thank you for those who have sacrificed to be on the call, for those who have sacrificed time to study and to um, search out your word so that we can uh, share and bless, be a blessing to other people. We pray, Lord God, that you will uh, renew us, renew our strength, renew our minds, uh, restore the time, Lord God, that we have um, sown. Father God, we give you praise and honor for everything that you've done. You're so good. You're so great. You're so kind. And we love you, and we thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you for that prayer, Regina. Um, She slathered that thing up and down. It is covered, Denise, and it is a done deal. You have victory. Um, I just um, wanted to encourage uh, Denise and Anyone else that may be listening to the replay that may be facing something similarly or, you know, is just intrigued um, about more, the word is just clear. Um, We've been given authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions, and uh, we've been given that power. We have authority in Jesus. And so I I just thank God for um, Denise being in this situation to manifest his glory. It is for righteousness' sake, and so just take courage in that fact that you have been given authority over the devil. He does not win. The power of God stands behind you, Denise, in the name of Jesus, to deliver. And um, I'm just excited about the praise reports and the outcome um, of victory that's going to come out of this situation. So watch God's hand move as you continue to lean on him, okay? Be encouraged tonight. This was um, a really great Bible study. It was one of those Bible studies, once again, where we just have to be yielded to however the Holy Spirit wants to take it. You know, we may be thinking we're complete in Chapter 12, and he's just like, no, nah, I need you to chew on that one scripture for a while. So we've always been at the pace of Holy Ghost. And so until next Monday, um, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, everyone, please be blessed and have a uh, powerful week. Good night. Yeah. You too. Good night. Good night. Love you, ladies. Peace.